Now, Lord, bring us together around your word. And Lord, give us where we stand in the God. And allow your word to fall on receptive ears and receptive heart. Take my nothingness and make something out of it. With these lessons we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. First John chapter 4, verse 7 through 8. And uh, a part of that, that little skit of drum ministry is uh, involving our, our youth and highlighting the topic of, of the message. And you kept hearing Barrett say he loved everything. He loved it. So we want to talk to you this morning uh, on the topic of unlock your love. Unlock your love from First John chapter four verses seven to eight. Uh, people use the word love in all kind of ways. Uh, they say everything. People will say, "I love my house. I love my car. I love my dog. I love my job." I I, I love football, I love baseball, I love shopping, I love texting, I love this, I love my computer, I love, and the list can go on and on and on and, and, and on. But, but uh, uh, that is because in our society, the definition of love is locked in a culture of confusion. It's locked up in our way of thinking and doing things in our society. But, but, but I'm here to, to tell you that the Bible's definition uh, uh, of love is simple. The Bible's definition of love is simple, that God is love. God is love. And that is a powerful statement. It is such a, 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 a powerful statement that, that God is a, a love. And when you look at the, uh, the text uh, in context, uh, you can see, read with me, uh, repeat after me verses 7 and 8 uh, of 1 John uh, chapter 4. Dear friends, Dear friend, let us love let us one love. another. For love, for love comes from God. Comes from God. Everyone, Everyone who, loves who loves has been born, has been born of, God of God and knows God. And knows God. Whoever, Whoever does, not love, does not love know God, know God because, because God, God is, is love. love. Amen. Amen. And we're here to, to tell you that the Bible definition uh, is, it is simple. God is love. But so often uh, we are locked up and confused about what is uh, a love because uh, we are too busy uh, listening to uh, people's definition of love instead of the Bible's definition of love. And here the Bible has a simple definition of, of love, and that is God is love. But when you look at the text in context in 1 John, when you look at the text in context in, in 1 John, you, 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 you learn something because John is writing to believers and telling them to what? Love one another. So you learn, you learn that it's not about what is love, but what you are doing to show the love of God in you. It is not about what is love, but what you are doing to show the love of God in you. Because the text clearly says God loves you, and, and God is uh, in us. So. Love is not about being, but doing. Love is not about being or the isness of, of, of life. Love is about doing. Now it is about, it's not about being, but doing. Uh, to know love is to show love. 
To know love is to show love. Love is not about talking about love. Love is about doing. And this is what uh, uh, John uh, is teaching uh, in the, the text. So one thing, when we know that the love of God, God loves us, that is very important, but it helps teach us that we are valuable. We are valuable. But when you look into that, you, you need to take some look at that because, see, uh, we are not, uh, uh, God does not love us because we are valuable. You need to re remember, God does not love us because we are valuable. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, excuse my grandma, but it ain't too much to you. Because right. yeah. remember, we said we're talking about we are valuable. Right? We're not talking about self worth. But when you just break it down, this is not anything too much to, to us. We we all come from dirt, and we're going back to dirt. Well, you, if you get cut, you will bleed. If you don't get anything to eat, you will get hungry. If you don't take a bath, you sleep. That's right. I don't care how rich you are or how powerful you are. That's right. So, so you know, we are, God doesn't love us because we are valuable. We are valuable because God loves us. Oh, yeah, that's the difference. We are valuable because God loves us. Everybody is somebody because everyone is loved by God. I don't care if you're overweight, God still loves you. I don't care if you pass your prime, God still loves you. I don't care whether you go to this school or that school, God still loves you. I don't care whether you messed up and you never made up, God still loves you. That's why we're valuable, and that's why I want we should uh, respect. We should respect human life, and, and until we uh, understand that and unlock that love, uh, uh, crime will continue in our communities. Families will continue to squabble. But most important thing, until you unlock the love in you, you will never find that peace. That Paul talks about it. that peace that passes all understanding. Uh, uh, that first cousin to that joy that the world uh, didn't give you, and the world can't take it away. But you got you must unlock that that love uh, in, in you. But you must know that you are valuable because God loves you. And that's very important in understanding uh, the, the, the definition. But so let's look, let's break it down and unlock some stuff. Let's uh, unlock some stuff because John says here, whoever does not, who, who, whoever, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Have you ever met some folks who know Genesis to Revelation, but they, they, but they don't have any love in them? You, know, you don't see any love in them? Uh, we've all bumped into that and had to deal with that. But, 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 but what? Because we are locked in confusion. Yeah, see, Christians are confused by, uh, by the love because the church is confused about love. And the church is confused about love because we live in a confused culture. We locked up in the culture with, with so many values. And that's why Jared said you love everything. And you love everything at, at, at the same level. What is some, some reason behind that? So I want to uh, look, look at unlock some stuff, and there's a whole bunch of stuff we need to unlock. But let's, uh, let's look at five things that we can quickly uh, unlock. Let's unlock uh, self gratification. Self gratification. And place it with uh, a communal uh, objective. Now, one of the, uh, the, the the reasons that that oftentimes in our political systems and, 
and don't have jobs, and, and so many of our institutions, we cannot get ahead because somebody's all about self. Self-gratification. And, and that is what we need to unlock. The second thing we, we need to unlock is uh, a, a microscope mind. A microscope mind. Now let me tell you, a microscope mind is a messy mind. It's a mind that deals with pettiness. It puts everything under a microscope. Everything under a, a, a microscope. And, and, and see, the microscope mind, I don't care what President Obama do, some folks will find something. They put everything up, they put it under a microscope. They put it under a, a, a microscope, you see? And, and they see what they want to see. But you know, that's, that's why I was drinking this little water. But I didn't drink as much as Ryan Jump when Joe Biden was eating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I had him under the microscope. Y'all need to pray for me. You see, under a microscope, my mindset, the mindset is a pity. I mean, do you know, in some folks, you can't talk to them without having an argument? That's what right. uh, Haters look at folks under a microscope. But see, God looks at us through a telescope. And they say, God is love. See, See, God can see down the road and see what the, he intended us to be, a broad, uh, look at us with broad uh, uh, lens. So we shouldn't look at the world through a microscope, but love looks at the world through a telescope. Now, we live in this culture, we locked up in this culture because our English word is limited. You know, that, that, that word, Jerry Love, I don't know. You know, Drew Brees. You just love, we just do, we just toss the word around, just so free. You know, some folks tell you I love you and cut you out the next word. You know, they probably mean both. They meant to be they do love you, but they meant to cut you out. So, but but the, but the, the Hebrew, the, the Greeks, uh, which in which the New Testament is written in, had had had, had different words to describe the phenomenon of love. See, in English, love is an attraction uh, based on relationship. So, you know, it's an attraction. You can be, you can be attracted to fried chicken and say you love fried chicken. You can be attracted to the boat and say you love the boat. So, so whatever you are attracted to, we try to define it defined with the word of love. But the Greeks had several words for love. So when we talk about unlocking some stuff, we already said we need to unlock self-gratification. We need to stop having what, what, a uh, uh, champagne taste and Kool-Aid money. Uh, but we, we need to do something with our, our brain and our mind and stop putting folks under a, a microscope and we look through love and, and look at it like God a little bit with a telescope but, then, but, but here's something else we, 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 we need to do. We, we need to unlock family feuds. We need to unlock family feuds. And see, the Greeks had a word for this, they, they had a word, sturgos, sturgos. That described a love between family. Family, now, now let's try to hook this up now. See, we said love is not about being. But doing. Yes. It's not about isness, but it's about doing. So a lot of times we have family feuds because it's about being. Not other. You know, hold on to your hats and your knees. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's something you don't like everybody in your family. <laughs> The only reason you hang out with them is because y'all got the same blood. If you didn't have the same blood, if you didn't have a family reunion, you would never see them in your life. Because that's about feet. And so many reasons we have feuds and foolishness in our family because it's, not, it's about being and not doing. The family unit is to help one another. And, 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 and to grow, not to break one another down. So, so if it's about doing, it's about doing. 
you know, help that cousin, even though he lied to you back in 1945. Go help. So what? Family and 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 not looking at the family through that microscope mind because see that's why what came through Abel. He, he couldn't worry about his job because he was too busy watching how God was blessing Abel. And you know, some folks, young folks, some of you can't get out of school and do what you're supposed to be doing because you're too busy worrying about your brother and your sister. So, family feuds. See, we got to unlock those family feuds. And, 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 and the Greeks had a word for that because, see, you, 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 you get complicated because, you know, you don't like everybody in your back. So, but, but, but the Greeks say you need the spirit also. But they, they didn't call it love. It was a different word they had. Now, something else we need to do, you know, we, 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 we need to unlock friendship fights. And, and see, the Greeks had a word for, they, they had a different word for friendship attraction. It was philos. And, 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 and so we need to understand that God looks out through a telescope, God is our friend to all of us. That is important because when we talk about peer pressure, you know, that's why young folks run to games and things, looking for friendship, looking for friendship. And sometimes we talk about young people with peer pressure, but you know, grown folks have just as much peer pressure as young folks. And now we don't dress the way we're supposed to dress because what? We're trying to impress some friends. Uh, we, we go buy a car that we don't need to try to impress other folk. Trying to keep up with the Joneses. Trying to make friends. You have folk who drink stuff they shouldn't drink because they don't want to lose their friends. Smoke something you shouldn't smoke uh, because you don't want to lose your, your friends. Uh, but, but you know, friendship, attraction, and then many times we put too much emphasis on friendship. Remember that God is your friend. But the last one we want to talk about, we need to unlock, we need to unlock some stuff about sex. See, the Greeks had a different had another word. Now, now this is the 21st century. Everybody watching everything and seeing everything. We we love everybody who make our toes curl. And I like to just do it. Go from love to love. Love to love. And and, and what, what is, is, is meant to see, God created sex. We didn't bring sex here. God created us to be sexual beings. And somebody said it works. <laughs> That must be that choir. <laughs> and, and so what? Sex is beautiful. They really ain't mad in that here. <laughs> but what we have, but we have done, we have taken the commitment out of sexual relationship. We have confused love and sex. And we have taken commitment out of the sexual relationship. Don't get married to get mad now. We just don't get married anymore. We think we do what we want to do. We do what we want to do. It's just a piece of paper. You know, you can't jump and holler and praise and then don't have any commitment in your relationship. It's about commitment. See, God is committed to the human race moving forward. So that's how we often confuse it. 
and, and we've said this before, and, and it's, it, it's, it's well known, in some cultures, you don't get married for love. You know, and, and what is well known about the India, they, 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 they call us Westerners. They say, you marry a person you love, but we learn to love the person we marry. Now, whether well, you agree with that, I agree with that, but the, fact, the emphasis is on the commitment to the institution of marriage. It's on the commitment to the institution of marriage. And that's often why we get in the situation because somebody made our heart beat. Yeah. Or we were looking for self-gratification in the situation. See, the problem is it's bigger than, 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 than who bought and buy us. It's bigger, it's bigger than that because you, you know, when people bump and body, it's a two way street. You know, what, 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 what Bill Weather said, keep on using me. And I show him using you to do the things you do. Well, both sides getting something out of it, whether it's physical or mental. It's a, it's a personal gratification and relationship bigger than just. Personal gratification. And my folk walk out, I ain't having no more. Bye. I'm gone. Check the later. I ain't sleeping to be this hard. No, no commitment. No commitment. Just think about if God treated us like that. Oh, y'all, you messed up today. You, you, you said in the emergency room you were going to go to church every Sunday. You went three straight Sundays and then you missed. I'm through, I'm through with you. But, but, but when God look, look through that telescope, because that's what love does. That's what love does. So, 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 so if we need to unlock self gratification, that microscope. Family feuds, friendship fights, sexy. But but the, the Greeks have another word that the biblical New Testament writers use. And we're all familiar with agape. Uh, 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 agape. And, and, and this is what, when the Bible has a simple the definition of love, God is love, God is agape. And agape means what? Self giving. Love without reciprocity. See, many times we won't love unless we get something out of it. You know, that's why we take romance and, and, and sex and call it love, but which we're getting something out of it. We get something, but God doesn't get anything out of it to love and what? Not want anything in, 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 in return. Uh, agape and self-giving for the benefit of the other person, even if they do not deserve it. That, 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 that is love. Unmerited love. That is uh, agape. And, and Jesus said that you what? Uh, well, you should love God but with all your heart. You should love what? God, your neighbor as you love yourself. And he said, you went on to, to love your enemy. That is to see the best for them and, and to do the best for them, not to hurt other people. It's, taught, it's, it's, hard, it's, it's very difficult to agape and be all about self. It's very difficult to agape and, and, and look at everybody under a microscope like you're the most superior person in the world. Uh, it is very difficult to agape and be tied up in a family mess. Yes. The, the gossip center. You know, it's very difficult to agape and be a backstabbing friend. It's very difficult to agape and just be a player. Or a cougar. It's going to be all right, man. I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to do it. I think I want to play this too. It's very, it's very difficult to agape and use other people.
for your personal endeavors. So, yeah, so that agape is the way. And, and that's how God looks at uh, us. That's how God views it. And, that, and that's, that's why the, the Bible says that, that what God sent his son. And in Philippians, he say that what he thought it not robbery, what to take on the human form and empty himself, that, that God that sacrificed, that Jesus came and sacrificed for us, that God so loved the world that what he gave his only son. So, so Lord, uh, it is sacrificial, it's, it's giving, it's, it's just giving to, you cannot give uh, uh, in a minute, anymore. So, agape is the way. So, how can you give? We're talking about unlock yourself, but how how can you agape? How can you agape? So we're gonna break it down and close it out and make it real simple. You you must do the unthing. And I, I, I excuse my grammar, but the unthing, yeah, I'm making up a word. The unthing, T-A-A-N-G. You know, and, you know, we talk about that, but you know when you talk about do that thing. You know, you know, it, it's something in our culture. It gets a little deeper when you say you got to, you got to unthink. If you want to unlock love, you got to unthink. So what, what you got to, you, 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 you got to not be a talk about love. You got to be a doer about love, and, and you got to be an unthink doer. You know, what do I mean by unthink? You got to do, uh, you got to do unburdened love. You, you got to put, to put a U in on your, is your prefix for when you're doing it. You got to do it unburdened. Unburdened. You can't put burdens on other other folks and see. But that's what Jesus was saying. Uh, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. But for my what? My yoke is easy, and my burden that is light. See, you cannot be. Uh, you got to bear other folk burdens. Uh, you cannot put burdens on other folks. Uh, that's how you do the unthing. Uh, uh, and, 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 you got to be able to do even when it's unearned. Uh, you can't be looking for something around every creek and corner. Uh, and you can't be uh, grabbing a dollar every time. Uh, and see, this is not popular preaching because they got to tell you today is about money coming and the prosperity gospel. Uh, if you don't, if you're not doing well, uh, you're not blessed. Well, I, I, you, you know, you can build big churches telling people what they want to hear. But the Bible says you got to agape. Uh, you got to agape. And agape is about what? Uh, doing that unthing, that unearned thing. Uh, you got to feed the hungry. Uh, you got to visit the sick. Uh, you got to go and what God has blessed you with. You got to go to the young children for free. Uh, you got to help somebody along the way. Uh, that's not popular preaching. Uh, no, that's not. That's what we, that's not locked in the capitalistic uh, uh, um, uh, mores of our culture, but you need to unlock it. Uh, you, you need to unlock it. Uh, anytime somebody can say that 47% of the people are nothing, and they only pay 10 or 12%, 14% of tax on multi millions of dollars. Uh, well, you got to unlock that thing. Yeah, you got to be willing to help somebody uh, along the way. Uh, you know, Walmart got to give it up. Uh, the Coach Brothers got to give it up. Uh, uh, nobody wants to talk about that. Uh, they, you, but you got to unlock it. Uh, you got to unlock it. Uh, you got to be unburdened. Uh, it's got to be unearned. Uh, but many times it's got to be what? Unmarried. Uh, that the fun thing. Uh, well, I know in school uh, they want to test you until you test anymore. But to see, justice uh, is not about tests. Uh, justice uh, and mercy is the only thing. Uh, sometimes uh, some folks won't deserve uh, the help you give them. Uh, sometimes uh, your best will not be good enough. Uh, but you got to do the fun thing.
thing. You have to do the other thing like Jesus did. No one wanted to touch the woman with the issue of blood, but Jesus did the other thing. Let her go home and touch me. Nobody could feed the four and five thousand men, probably a little more, but Jesus did the other thing. He fed the hungry. Nobody wanted to hold up uh, to the woman uh, who got caught running around. Uh, they wanted to stone her. Uh, they wanted to talk about her. Uh, they wanted to ostracize her. They didn't want to be her friend. But Jesus said uh, he looked through a telescope, uh, not a microscope. Uh, he said he without sitting among you uh, cast uh, the first stone. Uh, he did the uh, unthing. Uh, now what you need to do uh, is do that unthing. Uh, reach out and touch somebody. If God has blessed you, uh, but now not only must you do that unthing, uh, but you must do the turnaround. Yeah, you must do the turnaround. If you want to unlock your love, I'm just making up where you think. You know, do, do the turnaround. You got to do the turnaround. Some of us older folk, when we were back in school, in first and second grade, they, they always used to teach us this dance. Somebody do the hokey pokey. Put your left foot in, you shake it all about, put your right foot in. And you know. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you're going to go for it. And that's what it's all about. You have to do it to do the whole book. But, but if you want to unlock your love, you got to do the turn around. You got to do the turn around. And what you got to do the turn around, it's hard loving folk. It's hard loving folk. It's hard loving folk. It's hard loving the folk who you share the same blood with. Sometimes it's hard loving the folk you sleep in the same bed with. It's hard loving. It's hard loving the folk you sit by in the computer. You get on the other end, it's hard loving folk. You know, you can do all that other stuff. It's just hard loving people. It's just, but when you're a guy, you got to do the turnaround. Because you see, uh, uh, well, what did he say? He said, Dear friends, let us love one for love comes for everyone who love has been born of God. See, you got to be born again. You got to be born again. See, that's how you do the turnaround. You can't turn yourself around. You got to be born again. Uh, so if you do, if you want to be born again, you got to do the Holy Ghost turnaround. You got to do the Holy Ghost turnaround. See, see, you got to put your brain in and let the Holy Ghost uh, turn it all around. Uh, you got to open up your mouth and confess with your mouth and let the Holy Ghost uh, turn it all around. You got to put your heart uh, in it and let the Holy Ghost uh, turn it all around. Uh, and I see our ancestors, uh, they had shackles on their hands. Uh, they had braces on their feet. Uh, they had whoops on their back. Uh, uh, but they say, uh, I look at my hands uh, and my hands look different. I look at my feet uh, and my feet look different too. Uh, God turns things around. A better day is coming uh, if you look at the world uh, through a telescope of love. You know that God has brought you uh, a mighty long way. Uh, the Lord moved the mountains in your life. Uh, not because you were so good. Not because you were so valuable. Because God loved you that much. Uh, and so if you do uh, a turnaround uh, and unlock your love, uh, forgiveness will bring blessings uh, in your life. Uh, we you forgive uh, other folk. Uh, love uh, will bring joy in your life. Uh, will give you peace uh, that passes all understanding. A joy that the world did not give you uh, and the world cannot take it away. Uh, unlock your love. Uh, unlock your love uh, in your mind. Uh, unlock your love uh, in your heart. Uh, and watch God 